Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my June TBR. Now, I'm sorry about the lighting. I don't know what's happening with my camera at the moment. The lighting for me doesn't seem perfect. And I tried to do it out in the garden and it's just, yeah, I'm just not happy with the lighting at the moment. I don't know what I've got to do with my phone. I'm going to talk to Chris and see if he can work it out. But it seems to be quite hazy lighting. So sorry about that in advance. The good thing with June, I'm not doing any readathons, apart from if you count the fact that I've only got 18 books on this TBR, including my TBR jar book, so that's less than sometimes, and obviously I'm planning, I've got the library trips that I'm going to be doing, so I'm planning to kind of join in with Joy Riding June, which is run by Alice, and that is to read read as much as possible, Pardon me, read whatever books we like, and I've picked a very much of a TBR, which is full of books that I really want to read. I've not got any, I've got two buddy reads. I've got one big book to reread, but that is it. I've got seasonal books, but that's again, mood reading. And I've got a series books, again, they're mood reading. I've decided whatever I want to read. And I've just realized I've left the washing machine in the door open. So you might even hear the washing machine. I'm not organized today, sorry. Things are very manic this end. Um, I'm filming this on the 20th of May and things and I've got an insane week ahead of me. I think you would have been, this video is probably going live on Friday. So yeah, by the time this video goes live, it's been an insane week and June, I don't know what June, June, I've got um, a hospital appointment at the start of June. I'm going out, hopefully, fingers crossed, going to wake in with Charlie from Charlie Book Reads. And I may do something extra with Chris. I'm not entirely sure. But obviously I'll go into a bit, a bit more detail about that in my gratitude journal. But June is a busy kind of ish month. It's probably my only sort of quiet month because July is where it goes insane. So that might, that's why I'm joy reading. I'm reading as much as books as I want. I'm hoping that the sun stays out as much as possible in June. The sun that will really get here and will get lots of summer because I'm wearing a short sleeveless top. I'm well happy. Not a steam top, it's really nice that I'm actually in a skirt and enjoying it. And it feels June-ish already. It's only May. Anyway, this video is going to be ridiculously long if I don't get on with it. Now, first of all, I'll show you the two buddy reads. Then I'll do the TBR jar. TBR jar was a flop in May. I ended up DNFing the book and it's gone to Charlie. Because it just wasn't for me. So let's hope TBR jar. But yeah, the month before that, it was really good. So let's hope TBR does not. So my two buddy reads are, the first one is The Mark of Athena, which is the next in the Heroes of Olympus series. So it's a series book and a buddy read. I'm reading this with Kat from Brews and Reviews. This has got Annabeth as the central character. I don't want to tell you too much because obviously it's the third book in the series. But we are now literally going to be reading one a month until we finish this series. Because I have to know what happens. Annabeth feels the felt as if someone had draped a cold washcloth around her neck. She heard the whispering laughter again, and it, as if the presence had followed her from the ship. She looked up at the Argo too. A massive bronze hull glittered in the sunlight. Part of her wanted to kidnap Percy right now, climb on board and get the hell out of here while they still could. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was about to go terribly wrong, and she couldn't risk losing Percy again. Oh. Well excited, very long, don't care. It is really exciting. Annabeth sees Percy again. It's like it's bringing 572 pages. I don't care. I'm going to fly through this. I don't see us sticking to the schedule. I see us literally one of us zipping it up and then the other one catching up. Because this is a series I'm bloody loving. The next one is, another, is a buddy read with Angela from Reading Off My Shelf. It's a book that was all over Booktube a couple of years ago. Seven Moons of Marley Armida. It's probably my most obscure kind of book that I've ever read. It's not nearly 500 pages, 400 pages. Everyone knows about this book, but basically it's a searing satire set amongst the murderous mayhem of Sri Lanka, beset by civil war. Set in Colombo, 1990, Marley Almeida, war photographer, gambler, and closet gay, has woken up dead in what seems a celestial visa office. His dismembered body is sinking in the Beira Lake and he has no idea who killed him. At the time when scores are to be settled by death squads and suicide bombers and hired goons, the list of suspects is depressingly long as the ghouls and ghosts who cluster around him can attest. Mm -hmm. 
It's got a pretty cover. I think they're said to be by Cat from by Gem from Gemma Books. So it is pretty. Charlie loved it. I am nervous because it's not normally my kind of style of book, but it does look good. Actually, I'll show you my big book for June. June. And it, I'm reading it over June and July, and it's probably one of the biggest books on my TBR. And how the hell I think I'm going to read this over two months, I've got no idea. It is 875 pages, so that's basically, I'm going to keep it, keep it at 900 pages and read 450 pages in June and 450 pages in July. Or slightly less than that, but you know what I mean. It is chunky. I think, I, I think I'm possibly insane trying to read it over two months, but... I'm hoping I like it. It's by Alexandre Dumas. He's the guy who wrote, didn't he write Hunchback of Notre Dame? The story of Edmond Dantes, a self-skilled Count of Monte Cristo, is told by consummate skill. The victim of miscarriage of justice, Dante is inspired by a desire for retribution and empowered by a stroke of providence. It is massive. It scares the bejeebus out of me, but it's one that I really want to read and I'm really excited about. How do you guys think I should read it? Should I read like a small amount every day or read a larger amount or should I just blag it? Please let me know in the comments down below because I've got no idea how I'm going to read this chunky book. Now for the TBR jar. I'm scared. Right, actually, show you. Not that means much of a difference. Oh. Here you go, the fear. The fear, the fear, the fear. A postcard from Paris. Oh, that is actually one that I like the sound of, actually. And this one is actually a historical fiction. I'm happy with this. The TBR die, I think, has done well. I am so sorry about the washing machine. <laughs> this is a looks of quite summary, actually. It's set in Paris. Annie Lovell is keen to put the spark back in her, into her life when her elderly neighbour inherits. So when her elderly neighbour inherits an abandoned Parisian apartment, she goes to Paris to discover more. Her curiosity sets up an unexpected turn of discovery, a bunch of secret diaries hidden there by a young woman, Beatrice Crawford, who left England in 1916 to nurse the soldiers in the fields of France. Following Beatrice's journey from the Great, World War, Great War through to the Roaring Twenties and to a very different life in Nazi occupied Paris, and he must piece together the events from the past if she is set to fulfil the legacy that Beatrice left for her to find. Oh my god, historical fiction set in Paris. 400 pages, I don't care. This looks really good. I am well happy with that. That one that's going under this, so I don't forget. I am really happy with that. Fingers crossed the TBR jar did, jar did well this month. Now, three of my seasonal books, which I won't go into too much detail because I do talk about them in my seasonal books video, which I'll link down below. First one is The Secret Garden by Secret Garden Affair by Erica James, which is set in 18, 1981, July 1981, so that's a year. <laughs> How the hell that could be classed historical fiction when I was two, when this was out? <laughs> um, but I think it goes back to a longer past than that. I think it goes back because it's about um, set in the Suffolk countryside. At last, the house she hopes to piece to piece their life back together. So it's um, Livy flees London and che a cheating fiance. Livy's great aunt Bess and a, a renowned El a, and renowned garden designer and former socialite Elfrida are happy to help her. But as for lifelong friends Beth Bess and Elfrida, Livy's arrival has stirred up ghosts from the past, and they must. And before they can help her reveal their shattered, her shattered future, they must confront their own secrets. So I guess that's got more historical fiction in that than that. Looks really good. I'm really excited by it. Then we've got The Storm Swimmer by Claire Welch, which is like fantasy, middle grade fantasy. I know Olivia, Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe wasn't a massive fan of it because apparently it's very middle grade. But it's about like um, mermaids and um, like sea creatures and things like that and friendships and it does look really good it really is, does intrigue me summer is supposed to be Jennifer's time for fun about friends and fairs but when instead she's stuck in a dead-end seaside boarding house run by her grandparents then she meets perry the boy from the sea he dives through water like a dolphin and talks like a burst of bubbles his family is, is far away too but unlike janika he loves his independence really does look good really looking forward to that and then the last one is a book that I'm really excited by, and that's life-saving for, life for beginners. It's your friend who keeps you afloat. 
and I've blessed with some really great amazing friends and they certainly helped me. It's very seaside-y, it's um, about, I think it's like three or four different women. So we've got Mandy, Mandy Wolf's life has capsized. After a 20 year old marriage suddenly implodes, she heads to Brighton to search for her strange son. She meets the sea, salty sea girls, a group of feisty sea swimmers. Then you've got a 72 year old Helga who's determined not to slow down, while 30 something Tor is trying to figure out who she is. Then you've got bereaved mum, Do bereaved Dominica is trying to find a reason to carry on, and busy mum Claire is trying to put herself first for a change. Their regular cold water plunges become a lifeline for them all. And Maddie starts to realise that these brave women might help her find both Jamie and herself. Friendships, set by the sea, mob different ages, love the sound of that. Then to some my three series books. First one is The House of the Golden Door by L.R.D. Harper. I got the, her latest book, um, The Temple of Fortuna, in paperback recently, so now I can finally read this. This was sent to me by Jack from Spread Book Joy and I loved, loved, loved The Wolf Den. So I can finally, because I've now got the third book, I wanted to have that in standby just in case I wanted to read it quickly. And this is Amara, if you don't want to know spoilers from The Wolf Den, then wait until I've put this book down. Amara has escaped life as a slave in Pompeii's most notorious bottle. She now has a house, fine clothes, servants, but all her gifts are from her patron. Hers as long as she keeps her place in his affections. She adjusted, as she adjusts this new life, Amara is still haunted by her past. At night she dreams of the wolf den and the women she left behind. By day she is pursued by a former slave master. In order to be truly free, Amara will need to be as ruthless as he is. She knows she can draw strength from Venus, the goddess of love, yet falling in love herself might be Amara's downfall. Well excited by this. The next one is a series that I started recently and I don't know. I can't remember what this tells me what the first book is the series for. I got the third book, and this oh, the first book is The Daughters of War, and I've now got the third book as well in the series. So, Hidden Palace is set partly in 1980, 1925, Rosie Delacroix frees Paris for the Bohemian Clubs deep in the ancient winding streets of Malta. She was in the first book, I believe. A sister with a secret. In 1942, running from the brutalities of war in France, or maybe not, Florence Bourdieu must make a new life, but her estranged mother has a desperate request. Ah, no, it's Florence, the, the, the one that. Her, the, her, her estranged mother, who has a desperate request, finds her sister, who went missing years before. A rift across generations. This looks really good. Multi-generational, two timelines, historical fiction, set partly in France and partly in Malta. It's got all the tick lists for me. Then to a book that I've had on my TBR for ages. Sent Charlie from Charles Heath that sent it to me for Christmas. Or birthday last year. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous look. Hard oh, back. It's Dawnlands by Philippa Gregory. I've read Dark Tides and the, and I can't remember what the first book is in the series. I've read those two books and I love them, but this apparently will probably break me. Excuse me. I think it's the third in like a trilogy. I think. I think it's the last one. Sorry. A divided country. Look, power and loyalty conquer all. Ned Ferryman is inspired by news of the rebellion against the Stuart Kings. Returns, and he returns from America with a poking on that servant to join the uprising against the Roman Catholic King James. As Ned swears loyalty to the charismatic Duke of Monmouth, he discovers a new and unexpected love. And he got Queen Mary summons friend Livia to the terrified court. Recklessly, Livia drives to her son, Matthew, and her foster mothers, Eleanor and Alice, into the plot to save the Queen from Monmouth's invasion. Does look really good. It is bloody chunky though. It's like over 500 pages. So I'm going to be careful when I hold this. But I'm looking forward to completing that, ser that series. Then we got some other random books. Now none of these are like, these are all allowing me to mood read. Sweet, well, I'll move my slippers in a minute. Sweet. First one is a book that's recently out. It's my one of my favourite authors, Heidi Swain. It's The Holiday Escape. It's a standalone. I love Heidi Swain's that books. I love her standalones. Her standalone, The Book Lovers Retreat last year was one of my favourite books. Her dream holiday is his everyday life. His dream holiday is her normal life. What happens when they collide? Holiday bits, romance, two different timelines, two different sort of, not timelines, two different settings. So basically it's about Ali and her dad, Jeff, on a creative retreat in, from their home in Hollyhock Cottage. They give their guests a dream coastal break, but Ali can strong and different. 
Ali's survival strategy is to escape out of season and pretend to be the person she always imagined she'd be. And then she meets Logan while she's away in Barcelona, and he turns out to be exactly the attraction she's looking for. But while with her spirits restored, Ali returns home to pick up the reins again, and then Logan appears unexpectedly. Really looking forward to that. In a book that Katie from Books and Things raved about, and this is Amazing Grace Adams. Apparently it's a bit of a Christmassy book, so I shouldn't really be reading it in Chris Summer, but it's about an older protagonist and her life is like going the way, you know, she's older. She's got her, six, her daughter's 16th birthday cake and behind the, the scenes, Grace's life is in free fall. Her husband is divorcing her. Her daughter has banned her from her birthday party and Grace has abandoned her car in bumper to bumper traffic because Grace Adams has had enough. She's sick of being overlooked and underappreciated. And she's particularly tired of being polite. And she sets off on a journey to rediscover who she is and confront the secrets that have torn her family apart. I'm lucky I'm still with Chris, but my kids are getting older and sometimes I do feel like it is a pressure as a mum to lose yourself. And certainly when they were younger, I certainly lost myself and I've found myself through book shoots, thankfully. But obviously still sometimes I feel like I would love to run away and have a break. So this does interest me in that side of it. I'm looking forward to reading it. Then to Under the Whispering Door by TJ Clune. I love The House in Cerulean Sea by this author. I believe this is a bit different, but it's one I've wanted. I found it for like 20p in the charity shop. Literally, The, ha Under the House in Cerulean Sea was a favourite book of last year, so I'm hoping this is another favourite. When the Reaper collects um, Wallace from, from what she claims is his funeral, he's outraged, but Hugo, the owner of a particular tea shop, promises to help him cross over. And Wallace reluctantly agrees to, to, to accept the truth. Yet even in death, he refuses to abandon his life, desperate to spend all of it working. And Wallace grows, as Wallace grows closer to Hugo and shares jokes with his resident gut, as his, with his resident ghost, he wonders if he's missed something. So when he, set, he is given one week to pass over to the other side, Wallace sets about creating a lifetime in just seven year, days. An uplifting story about a life spent at the office and a death spent in a building, building a home really good really excited by that then to a random book that charlie made me read it's a thriller so i don't know if i'm gonna like this this is the sisters by claire douglas when one sister dies the other must go to desperate lengths to survive what the hell has charlie made me buy after a tragic accident still haunted by a twin sister's death abby makes about is making a fresh start in bath but when she meets siblings b and ben she is quickly drawn into their privileged an unsettling circle. When one sister lies, she must protect her secret at all costs. God, this looks like it's scaring the big ears out of me. If I don't like it, I'm DNFing it, okay? I'm already scared. Then to a contemporary that I got given by an anonymous gift, anonymous person, this is Love Lockdown by Beth Records. She's the person who wrote The Kissing Booth, which I watched with Mia, and I don't know if Mia's appropriate, but I loved it and I thought it was quite fun. We skipped over the naughty bits just in case. But this is, I don't know if it's lockdown as in COVID lockdown, but it's about a love story, perfect for fans of the flat show and love actually. When an apartment pop, pop block is put on lockdown, its residents are, for, are in for a whirlwind week. In flat 14, wild and reckless Imogen is stuck living with a one night stand, whose name she can't remember. Upstairs, Ida and Danny are still in the honeymoon period, but what's an all week together so early in the relationship could make or break their relationship. Meanwhile, Zach and Serena's relationship is on tender hooks, and a pineapple on pizza might actually be the last straw. Jen will laugh at that. In flat 22, Olivia's maid of honour duties are being pushed over the, into the, over the edge as the wedding planning weekend has turned into an absolute nightmarish week. And speaking of weddings, the whole thing has made Ethan realise he wants to spend the rest of his life with Charlotte. If only he can surprise her with the perfect proposal and to find a way of sneak into her building. This looks really good. Romance. Sounds fun. Then to a completely opposite to that book, A Murder is Announced by Agatha Christie. It's my first Marple book, but Alice reckons I should start with Marple with this book because it's one of her favourites. I'm hoping it's not going to scare the bejeebers because I've loved Pyro and I've read Standalone, so I'm intrigued as to what Marple's going to be like. The village of Chipping Clayhorn are agog with curiosity when a gazette advertises A Murder is Announced and will take place on Friday, October 29th at Little Paddock's 6.30 p.m. A childish practical joke, a spiteful hoax. Unable to resist the mysterious invitation, the locals arrive at the l little paddocks at an appointed time when, without warning, the lights go out and a gun is fired. Well, looking forward to this. 
into a book that I wanted for a tandem read along, and my copy got lost. But I bought it anyway because I thought it was found in a charity shop. The House in the Olive Grove by Emma Cowell. I read one letter from Greece last year and loved it. This is quite a summer book. Three women, three very different lives, one summer they'll never forget. Chef Maria runs, runs a successful cookery school in her home village of Fidatani, Greece, but she is also running from the secrets of her past. Food journalist Kayla thought that Kayla thought that this was going to be another work trip. But right before she leaves from Greece, she discovers her whole life is built on a lie. Then you've got jewellery maker Alexandra is always has always lived according to our own rules, but to, despite the cost to, to do so. When she has some devastating news, these three women come together in the house on the Olive Grove and an unlikely friendships blossom. That does sound really good. Okay, and then last year I bought a book that has had mixed reviews on Booktube. It's Learnt by Heart by Emma Donoghue. I think I bought it because I love Emma Donoghue's books. I've read quite a lot of her books and I bought it full price. It was one of my, it's a signed copy. And it has very, ha has really has had mixed reviews. I don't need that to see. Um, but I bought it because I think Jen from Jen Books was talking about it, even though I don't know if she'd read it. Signed, beautiful signed copy. The end page is stunning. It is about, um, I think it's basically based around Anne Lister, who we know is one of the first LGBTQI characters of her era. Eliza and Lister have never have never been this wide awake in their lives. The slight with and the slope, with its curtains drawn wide, is bright with sunlight. The question Eliza's been meet, needing to ask swells like a great berry in her mouth, and the once she is scared to let it out. Not scared at all, not scared of anything. And it's a, it's a mesmerising new novel, apparently. It tells the heartbreaking story of two women whose unlikely relationship will change them forever. It has had mixed reviews. I bloody love this copy, because it's stunning. And I'm hoping I love it, because I've read a lot of um, Emma Donoghue's books, I loved The Pull of the Stars. I enjoyed The Wonder. Don't know if I've read the Frog Music. I read The Sealed Letter and I liked that. Slimakin I liked. And they're the ones I've liked. And the Room by Anna John Hugh. I've read that and I loved that. That was one of my favourites. So I'm hoping I like this, but it has had mixed reviews. Katie loved it and other people haven't loved it. So I am hoping I love it. Now... If you got to the end of this video, leave me an eye emoji because there's an eye on this and I think it looks quite cool. So leave me an eye emoji. What books are you reading in June? Are you going to do join reading June with Alice? Are you mood reading? What books are you looking forward to? I'd love to know in the comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, not subscribe, bring on my ding a ding. And I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.